Welcome back everyone. In this lesson, we are going to be setting up our enemy scene. Now, the enemy scene is basically going to be similar to our player in the sense that it's going to be an object in our world and they are going to be moving from one position to another and if they get hit by the player, then that's game over. So to begin, what we are going to do is create a brand new node here. Okay, and this is going to be of type area 2D. Now, an area 2D is basically a node which can detect collisions or cl uh, detect when another collider has passed through itself, and then we can run the respective code uh, for whatever we want to do. So we've got our area 2D. Let's rename this to be our enemy. Uh, we then need to give our enemy a visual so we can actually see where they are. So we're going to open up our sprites folder, characters, and I am going to use this bat character right here so we can drag them in make them a child of enemy, rename that node to be sprite, and set its transform position to be zero on the X and zero on the Y. Now with our enemy here, we can move this over here just so it's out of the way of our player. And what we are then going to do is attach a collision shape because in order to detect collisions, we need a collision shape. So we're gonna go add child node, collision shape 2D. This is going to be a circle shape Okay, and we can then change the size of that. So I'm just going to make it a bit smaller than the sprites so our player can pass by uh, just. And there we go. That's all we need for our enemy node. Now, we need to create a script. So I'm going to go over to the inspector. I'm going to create a brand new script called enemy.gd. Make sure it inherits area2d here. Click create. First of all, let's go ahead and add in some variables. So our first variable is going to be our move speed, and this is basically going to be how fast this uh, enemy is gonna be moving. It's gonna be of type float, and it is going to be equal to, let's just say 30 by default, okay? So 30 pixels per second. We then want to have another variable for our move direction, and this is gonna be type vector two. Now, our move direction is going to basically be in what direction and how far do we want this enemy to move before returning to its original position. Because if we go back into 2D mode here, I'll show you what I mean. Basically, with our enemy, it's going to have a starting position. So let's just say it's here. And then we're going to have a move direction. Now, let's just say our move direction is up by about 100 pixels. Okay, it's going to be up around here. So what's going to happen is at the start, it's going to move along that until it reaches its start position plus move direction and then return to start position, then along that move direction again, then back to start position, okay? And we can basically have that wherever we wish. Um, now, these values are, of course, gonna be different for each instance of our enemy. You know, one enemy, we might want to move faster than another. We might want to have a different move direction from one another. So in order to modify these values in the inspector, we need to export them. And to do that, we just need to add in the export, like so in front, of each of these variables. And now if we save that and look in the inspector, you should see we have a move speed and a move direction property. Now along with these variables, we also need a variable for our start position, which is gonna be of type vector two. Um, we're not gonna be exporting this since we're gonna be modifying it in code. Same thing for our target position, okay? So. Our start position is going to basically be the starting position of the enemy and the target position is going to be where the enemy is going to currently be moving towards. So down here in the ready function, which gets called right at the start of the game, we are going to set our start position by going start pause equals global position. And then we also want to set our target position. So target position to be equal to our start pause plus our move direction. Okay like so. Now that we have this set up, what we can do is down here in the process function, we can move towards our target position every frame because the process function gets called on a frame by frame basis. So to move towards our target position, we are going to go global position equals global position dot move toward. Now we want to move toward our target position at a rate, so we can go comma, at a rate of our move speed multiplied by delta. Now, the reason why we are multiplying by delta is because since this function gets called every single frame, that means that we are moving towards our target at move speed, okay? And if we didn't have the delta here, that means we would be moving towards our target at 30 pixels 
uh, per frame. And multiplying that by delta basically converts that into 30 pixels per second. And since process can fluctuate, you know, from maybe 10 FPS all the way up to a couple hundred FPS, um, you know, it can be all over the place. If you're running on a slower machine, then the enemy would move slower. If you're running on a faster machine, the enemy will move faster. Multiplying by delta just makes it consistent. So we have that. Now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and basically check to see if we have reached our target position. So if global position is equal to our target position, then what we want to do is basically switch them around. So we can then check if global position equals our start position, then we want to set our target position to be equal to our start position plus move direction. Otherwise, what we want to do is we want to set our target position to be equal to our start position. Okay, now we have a couple of statements here and it might be a bit confusing, but pretty much what we are doing here is making it so that once we have arrived at our target position, we're gonna to check to see if, first of all, is this our original start position? If so, then we want to move along our move direction. Otherwise, if we are at the end of our move direction, we want to move back to our start position. And what this means is that we are basically going to be moving back and forth between those two points. So let's save this. Let's go back into our scene here and we'll just set up a nice, simple uh, enemy movement. So we have our enemy here, move direction. I'm gonna set the Y to be, uh, we'll go negative 50. So that basically means our enemy is going to be moving up 50 pixels, then back down to where it started. So let's press play and see if it works. And as you can see, our enemy moves up 50 pixels and then back down to its start position, then back up 50 pixels, then back down to its start position, okay? And that is just gonna be looping over and over. But as you can see, our enemy can hit us and it does nothing. So what we need to do is make it so that when the enemy collides with our player, it is going to call that game over function. Now to do this, we first of all want to select our player. We want to go into where we have the node window here next to inspector, select groups, and we want to add our player to a new group. Now, a group is basically like tagging the object, and this just allows us to quickly identify, you know, what sort of node this is. So I'm gonna add player right here, click add, and now our player node has the player group. So what we can do with this is if we go back into our script, select our enemy script, um, we need a way of detecting when a collision has happened, when the enemy has entered another body. Now to do that, we can select our enemy node here. We can then go over to the node window once more, but select signals. And in signals here, we have a bunch of them. And a signal is basically a function call for when a certain event happens. And we want to go over to where we have the body entered right here. So we want to double click on that, select our enemy, click connect. And we should have a new function that gets added to our enemy script called on body entered. And it has a parameter here of type body. Now body is basically the object that we have um, interacted with. And what we want to do is check to see if this body is the player. So how do we do that? Well, we can check its group. So here I'm gonna go if body dot is in group of player, then what we want to do is just go body dot game over, okay? Just like that. So on body entered, it gets called when um, another object has entered our collision shape, um, and that is the object of body here. And we are basically checking to see if that body is in the group player, and if so, then we are calling its game over function. So if we save this, press play, we should see that if we run into the enemy here, wait for it to come down. There we go. We can even jump into the enemy and it is just going to restart the level just as it does if we fall off the edge of the map. So now what you can do is go ahead and just start adding in all of these enemies throughout the level. You can have some going up and down, left and right at different speeds. Um, yeah, you can do pretty much whatever you want with that. But before you do that, make sure to drag your enemy down into the file system to save it as a scene, okay? Because now it is a scene, we can copy and paste this around and any changes we make to the original scene here, those changes will be applied to every instance of the enemy. In the next lesson, we are gonna be working on setting up our spikes, which are gonna be another trap that the player has to avoid. So thanks for watching and I'll see you all then.